RT1 VHF on MURS. Radio, Radio check. frequency um, that I could hear on my transmitter. Um, so we're going to switch to what I programmed in as channel 10, 11 is MURS 1, and then of course um, 12 is 2, 13 is 3, 14 is 4, 15 is 5. So 10 I programmed in as MURS 1 um, with tone squelch. Uh, receive as well as transmit uh, because receiving a uh, signal when you have the scrambler on the voice inversion on uh, a non voice inverted signal the regular signal is extremely um, we'll say unknown so this is what it sounds like well this is what a scrambled signal signal sounds like to a regular On back into non regular mode. Radio check one, two, three, four, five. Radio check one, two, three, four, five. So these are identical radios. The, their serial numbers are. Um, I don't know if you can see that or not, but uh, they were made, you know, almost right next to each other. Um, just you know on off there's no setting one two three four five six seven eight like there are on some radios um it's just on or off um it's a voice inversion uh standard uh voice inversion which means it can be descrambled or decrypted i don't really want to use the word encryption because i feel like that's not really the correct term um relatively easily uh but it does the tour. It does the tour. Um, the casual, the casual eavesdropper. Um, so let's see what. how the audio is upshifted in tone um, and that's just the inversion frequency uh, just think of a single, single sideband transmission that you're listening to uh, with the wrong sideband LSB, but instead you put your radio in upper side band and you tune it to, you know, 27287 and, you know, kind of sounds like Donald Duck after he smoked some meth and inhaled some helium. Um, uh, completely unintelligible, 
no matter how much you tune it in. Yeah, but uh, switching the sidebands switches the pro fixes the problem because the signal is inverted. Um, is a pretty good way of explaining how speech inversion scrambling works. So it's easy to do, um, it's easy to implement, and it's actually pretty effective for uh, a, a lot of purposes. It's, it's not encryption, um, it's scrambling. Uh, encryption would be, you know, something like Fascinator, Vincent, or, um, you know, the more commonly found nowadays uh, uh, digital voice encryption um, techniques, um, uh, DES, or what is more commonly, you know, seen now, which is AES uh, encryption uh, 256, uh, and then there's encryption that is, you know, run on, like, DMR uh, digital voice, which is just the same thing. You, if you run encryption on a, another digital system, you are simply uh, encrypting the data packets and then decrypting them on the other end. And the same applies for uh, you know low-coded voice signal that's been converted to data transmitted, well encrypted, transmitted, received, decrypted, and then um, you know converted back into voice by the uh, the vocoders decoder part on the radio receiver, um, on, a, on a digital radio, whatever, you know, digital voice mode you're using, DMR, um, an X-Edge or an XDN, uh, P25, uh, Tetra, what have you. So it's the same concept. Um, so I, I hesitate to call it encryption because it's not encryption, it's just inverting the voice frequencies. <laughs> But again, it is the it is enough um, to deter the casual listener. The issue is, of course, the intelligibility of a scrambled signal. And again, this is what you um, this is a regular uh, narrow FM signal. So radio check one two three four alpha. Tango six four Alpha Tango six four six. This is silver plate out. So compare that to Alpha Tango six four Alpha Tango six four six. This is silver plate out. The intelligibility is night and day, if you ask me. Um, you know, one of these, one of the things that these radios has going for it, this radio, the RT1, is it's got a nice, strong, um, it's got a decent, it's got decent FM deviation, especially for what it is. Uh, you know, it's not a Motorola, um, but it's not trying to be. Um, well, maybe it is. Some could say that. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's... It's got nice, strong FM deviation, and it's got a good transmitted audio, you know. Um, on NFM and FM mode, uh, but with that scrambler on, it's gone. It sounds really, really bad. It's got its tinny... the tone squelch on the uh, channel that I programmed the scrambler on 
because now in order to hear a regular transmission in you know received with the scrambler turned on i have to open the squelch which is really annoying it's not that sound it's that sound which jesus that's awful um yeah okay well maybe we'll do another video where i remedy that um but yeah that's kind of what this is you know i, I i'm kind of disappointed uh, a little bit um in that function and i don't think i'm going to be using it as much as i initially thought just because of the significant decrease in intelligibility um when when uh you know, when the radio has the scrambler mode on, I don't think it's worth that uh, increase in, you know, moderate to limited increase in uh, communication security that you get. So that might be a, uh, a good idea that was implemented poorly for some reason. And I have used scrambling with other radios with a much higher success rate. Um, be it a you know Motorola Max Track that had a aftermarket scrambler board, or the uh, TYT TH9000 radios, which have a scrambler uh, voice inversion scrambler setting as well. Um, so you know this might be a swing and a miss for this radio, but that's okay. Um, it's just like. When it's receiving a signal, with the scrambler on, at least when the squelch is open, the status light flashes red, which it does not do um, in regular mode. So that's. I don't know if that's something you can program in and or out, but um, I just noticed that. Huh, interesting. So yeah, we'll see about that. I don't. I had originally envisioned these as a you know um, secondary uh, attack radio um, to use you know on part ninety frequencies um, that I have a license for, or MERS um, in addition to. Uh, Two meter amateur work, uh, obviously without the scrambler. Um, but uh, I don't think these are really usable in the field with the scrambler function on because of the loss of intelligibility. Um, yeah. So okay. Either way, that's okay. So we'll finish up that video and that demonstration, if you want to call it that. And uh, yeah, there might be more more to come. I might experiment with this a little bit more and see if I can get it to a usable state. Um, that's where we're at right now. Yeah, thanks for watching. Sorry about the super long length.